Nicole says, my daughter Carolyn, you're about the same age. I'm sure you'll get along very well. She's a lovely girl. That's Carolyn Stoddard. Real fire eater, huh? All in the report, Mr. Devil. All in the report. doesn't make any difference, whichever you like. Well, Vicky, on behalf of myself and my kooky family, I bid you welcome to the House of Usher. <laughs> Thanks. On second thought, I'd be glad to help you pack. Well, not tonight. Well, I guess there's some of us who just love to suffer. Oh, you sure I'm not disturbing you? I have a bad habit of just popping in. Oh, no, no, not at all. I was just writing a letter to a friend back home. Why don't you sit down? When you write to your friend, all you have to say is one word. Help! Vicky, you seem like a nice person. Do yourself a favor. Go back home to New York. You know, I've been hearing that every hour on the hour since I got here. Why does everyone want me to go home? Oh, I didn't say I want you to go. Heck no, it'll be a ball having somebody around here to talk to. But you've been in this mausoleum a couple of hours. Do you think it'll be fun and games? I'm willing to find out. Victoria Winters, I think I'm gonna like you. Okay. Ask. Ask what? Well, I was born and brought up in this prison. And you can't tell me you don't have a couple of dozen questions. Come, come. No hesitation, please. It will not hurt. Very good. Well, I do have a question. Good, good. Who's Burke Devlin? Never heard of him. Your uncle has. Oh, so you met Uncle Roger. What did you think of him? He's a real doll, isn't he? Well, he seems very nice. Nice? Vicky, Roger Collins has more charm in his right earlobe than all the characters in this icky, sticky town. Oh, he sends me. He really does. And you know who my mother wants me to be hung up on? Joe Haskell. A fisherman yet. 
Oh, sure, Joe's a nice guy, but... Well, let's face it, Vicky. If you had your choice between a charmer like Uncle Roger and a homegrown variety, which would it be? I didn't know you had the choice. I guess I don't. I guess I'll never have any real choices until I can... Hey, you were asking me about someone, weren't you? I was asking you about Bert Devlin. Oh, yes. Bert Devlin. Bert Devlin. Never heard of him. I'll ask the usual questions and you'll give the usual answers. Then, Jason, you'll slip on the ring, and after a few minutes, it'll all be over. Ah, no. It'll be the beginning of our happiness. Happy. Now, if you will just join hands. Do you, Elizabeth Stoddard, take this man, Jason McGuire, to be your lawful husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, in sickness and in health, until death do you part. Answer, I do, dear. Answer? Say simply, I do. I... I... Liz? I know. Liz? No. No, I can't. Leave her alone. Wait. Elizabeth. What is it? I killed Paul Stoddard. And that man was my accomplice. Why are you here? Oh, I was about to ask you the same question. This is no time for questions. Just go now. But this coffin, why is it here? I, what does it mean? I, I can't tell you that now. But it's here, just the way David described it. Why? Just don't ask any questions. Just go now before it's too late. It's already too late.
What are you doing here, Carolyn? I, I came to see Cousin Barnabas. And now you see him. But, but you can't be Barnabas. But I am. But what's happened to your face? You're so old. It won't be old much longer. <laughs> You may scream all you want, but no one will hear you. Now, don't be afraid of me, my dear. I'm not going to hurt you. I wouldn't do anything to hurt my own flesh and blood. She was still a girl hiding behind doors. Besides the obvious advantage of having a wealthy wife... Do you ever stop planning? Ah, Cousin Millicent. I hope you found your room satisfactory. Oh, charming. We had hoped to be in the new house by the time you arrived, but the trouble with workmen today is they don't work. <laughs> Cousin Joshua, what a witty man you are. Witty? Oh, yes. Thank you. You remember Cousin... Jeremiah, of course. Of course. How are you, Cousin Medicine? Oh, I'm much better, thank you. The quiet has done my nerves much good already. New York is a very noisy, hectic city, and I find that noise affects my nerves. Indeed. Well, I should simply pack my bags and move out of it. <laughs> you know you always have a home here. Isn't that right, Jeremiah? Always. Remember that, Cousin Medicine. Joshua is not known as being so free with his invitations. Your brother is very kind. Joshua is also very serious. He would like nothing more than to have all the Collins living in the same house. One large, happy family. A dream, I'm afraid, which will not come true. I wonder if you would be kind enough, Jeremiah, uh, to take Cousin Millicent to see Barnabas. He hasn't been well. Indeed. Is it serious? No, oh, no, 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 no. Anything contagious? Possibly. Oh, of course not. I, I must be extremely careful. I am delicate. And if anything happened to me, what would my poor little brother do? Yes, he is quite young to manage your affairs. But seeing Barnabas will be perfectly safe for you. Well, Jeremiah? Much as I would like to, Joshua, I'm afraid that Cousin Millicent would not appreciate it. I feel a slight cold coming on. Oh, no. So you would be much safer with my brother. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's uh, quite all right, Miss Winters. I would like you to meet our cousin, Millicent Collins. Carolyn, you said something. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Collins. It's just that you look so very much like someone I knew well a long, long time ago. I shall tell my children. I mean, so few people see eclipses. So few people are up this late. I mean, people one knows. I understand that other people stay up later somehow. Good night. I'm staying for a few minutes. Oh, no, no. You mustn't. Remember the night when Cousin Barnabas discovered you here so late? Yes, well, he's on his way to England now. Yes. An odd fact in itself. I mean, he never mentioned his going, and I saw him just a day or two before. To leave for England in the middle of the night. Wasn't it lucky there was a ship? Millicent. No, well, sir, you really must be going. My relatives will not think I value myself very highly. Oh, yes, they will. My, my cousin Abigail, if she should find Would us. be most jealous that I haven't been keeping her up this late. You do have a sense of humor, sir. I understand that amounts to a character defect in any serious relationship. Oh, who told you that? Uh, my lawyer. He warned me about men who make light of proprieties, as did my broker. He went even further. Mm, warned you against all men? Uh, that's because he wants you all for himself, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> my broker is over 70 years old. <laughs> well, would that stop his hoping? 
you, Joe. Oh, no, when I am 70, I shall fall in love with someone exactly like you. Oh, it is not without reason they say men's minds are so difficult to understand. I think you frighten me, oh, sir. Oh, well, then tell me how and I will stop. Oh, no, please don't. I, I mean, you make me do things I should not do. Like, uh, like watching the eclipse? Yes. I realize it is not your fault that eclipses occur late at night. Well, I'm glad you do. It's... it's what you make me do that frightens me. It... it's more than that. It's... It's what I make you think about? Yes. Oh. Well, don't be so upset about it. How else can I be? Well, you could be slightly more modern in your approach to life. Ah, but then I, I expect you, you'll learn to be after we're married. Sir. Married. Sir, I had no idea your intentions were so honorable. Yes, well, my intentions have surprised even me. Will you marry me, Millicent? I shouldn't. I know you don't know very much about me. Oh, I know everything about we you. We haven't spent very much time together. More than I've ever spent with any other man. Well, then why do you think you shouldn't? I mean, I shouldn't accept as quickly as I'm going to. Oh, Nathan. Oh, oh no. Please. Now, Millicent, we kissed before we became engaged. Oh, but now, now we must behave properly. Well, properly engaged, yes. No, no, please. Oh, I have so much to think about. Married. To you. We shall be married in New York, of course. And then we shall return here. How could you leave me on a day like this? How could you? If you'd give me a chance to explain. I'm not interested in explanations. Well, listen, I went in to get a gift for you, a gift that I'd left in my quarters. I couldn't find it. That's what took me so long. I was looking for it. I don't believe you. It's the truth. You have been gone all day. I said I was sorry. You don't really love me. I know you don't. Well, listen, I do. There were only some way that I could prove it to you. There, there is. You have said, repeatedly, that my money meant nothing to you. Well, it doesn't. That you would love me even if I were penniless. I would, believe me. Uh, Nathan, now that the time has come to say it, I don't know how. What is it, Millicent? I'm afraid to say it. Afraid I'm going to lose you. Oh, now you're not going to lose me. You know that. Well, what is it? I saw my lawyers. Oh, Nathan. Go on. What is it? I have no money. None whatsoever. I've signed it over to my brother Daniel. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I'm so happy. I don't understand. Now, neither of us will ever have to worry about the money again. Now we can find out how truly we love each other. And you're not angry. You're not disappointed. I love you, Millicent. Oh, Nathan. Now, do you believe me? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, now, why are you crying? I was so frightened. Well, there's no reason to be frightened anymore. All right. Here. You make yourself pretty. And we'll go down to dinner together. Oh, yes. Yes. We'll let them all see how happy we are. Ready? Yes. Oh, my darling. 
<laughs> Aren't you going to wear those, those earrings that you had on this morning? Did you like them? Well, you made them quite beautiful. If it would please you, I would wear them always. But where's the other one? The other what? The other earring? They were here just a moment ago. Oh, well, it must have fallen. But I don't see it. Well, I certainly hope you haven't lost it. No, no, I couldn't have. It must be here someplace. All right, now, don't, don't let yourself get upset. I'm not upset. You're acting extremely upset. But I'm not. I'm really quite calm. Then I must beg you to act calmly. But I... I am. I fail to see any evidence of it. What's that? Uh, beg your pardon? That sound. It's so frightening. What sound? But surely you must hear it. Dogs howling. Dogs howling? Now listen, are you certain you're not upset? Don't you hear it? Listen. <gasps> what is it? Look. The tower. What about the tower? The room is all lit up. Cousin Joshua insisted I didn't see it. But there it is again. There what is again? That light in the tower. I see no light in the tower. But, but it's there. How can you not see it? Millicent, come here to me. But there is a light in the tower. All right, now, I just want you to try and remain calm. And I do hear the dogs howling. Don't, please, Millicent, just keep calm. I do see the light. I do hear the howling. If you say so. But you've got to believe me. I do. I do believe you. If you want me to. No. No. <laughs> this time you cannot tell me it is the reflection of the moon. The moon has not yet risen. Now tell me you see it. A charming fancy. No. No, it isn't. I'll never understand your mind, Millicent. I shall spend the rest of our lives trying. Oh, Nathan, why can't you see that light? Because I'm not such a romantic as you are. Now, who do you think lives up there? I don't know. Imprisoned poet languishing with love? Tell me. I don't think any such thing. You should go up there, you know, to find out. No. Yes. No, I, I couldn't. You must face the reality, Millicent. That there is no light in the tower. That the tower is deserted. You, you aren't going to make me go. I think I must. For your own good. But I would be so afraid. And there, there is a storm coming. You must conquer your fear, Millicent. It's most important for our lives. You will come with me. Nathan or anyone. You, you must, you 
must let go of me. When Nathan hears of this, it will kill you. I wanted you to kill him. No, Nathan will kill you. Millicent, please. I tell no one. Promise you won't. I'll let you go if you promise. I can't. I can't. Then, my dear Millicent, you give me no choice. In England, some say, though others swear him dead. When did you come here? We came for a wedding. No, I mean tonight. Was Barnabas here when you came? I cannot stay in this house with everyone coming into my room. I shall complain most vigorously to Cousin Naomi. Millicent, you must tell me what has happened. Everything is always my fault. Always. I am always wrong. What did Barnabas do to you? Where is he? Cousin Joshua, how nice of you to ask Daniel and me to Barnabas' wedding. When one has as few relatives as we, one should be much closer than we are. It is living in New York which separates us in body, if not in mind. Millicent. Millicent. I beg your pardon. Who is Barnabas? And you're Elizabeth. Cousin Elizabeth. Cousin Elizabeth? Yes, I guess I am. I apologize for coming without letting you know in advance. It's uncanny. What is? With that portrait over there, have you seen it? Yes. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Well, if it weren't for the clothes, Forgive me for staring, but for the moment it seems as though I'd seen a... Ghost? Well, the likeness is, is remarkable. I can hardly believe it. The, the Collins blood always had a certain persistent strength. This is no way to greet a relative. Welcome to Collins. Thank you, cousin. I startled you, didn't I? I apologize. I didn't hear you come in. Is it too late to get a cup of coffee? I was just closing. Oh, then I won't trouble you. Uh, do you know where I can get a cup of coffee? The place I can think of is closed by now. <laughs> it's one of the charms of Collinsport. We roll up the sidewalks when the sun goes down. Yes, Collinsport can be lonely at times. But then it's not unique in that respect. Nighttime in itself can be lonely. I suppose so. But then one gets used to loneliness. It's part of existence. I suppose so, for some people. 
Again, I apologize. For what? For striking up a conversation, for wasting your time. Oh. I realize that you're anxious to leave. That's all right, mister. I have a bad habit of, of starting up conversations with people. When conversation is not welcome, it's a habit I must correct. Well, I don't mind talking to strangers. I do it all day long. You're very kind. But I've taken enough of your time. Good night. Mister. Yes. I'm not going anyplace important. And I forgot to clean out that last coffee pot, sir. If you want a cup of coffee, I'll get it for you. If it wouldn't be too much trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. I'll just switch on a few lights. I do appreciate this. I am rather weary. Perhaps the coffee will revive me. <laughs> well, this coffee is going to be strong. I'll guarantee you that. Hey, would you like something with it? No, just the coffee. Hey, are you just passing through town? No, I live here. Well, I thought I knew everybody in town on site. I plan to live here permanently. Well, do you have family here? I have relatives. Well, who are they? I probably know them. I'm related to the Collinses. The Collins family? Yes. Then you're a Collins. Yes, my name is Collins. Barnabas Collins. a night such as this, a night when a young, beautiful woman was pressed to her limits. She could no longer accept what the future held for her. She knew she had to destroy herself before she became something she did not want to be. She had quarreled with her lover. She tried to send him away, but he would not be put off. He tried to put his arms around her, but she broke away from him and ran out into the stormy night. Her white dress contrasted against the darkness. He ran after her as she headed for the one place on earth that seemed to be designed for the termination of life. The rain drenched her. The winds buffeted her, blowing her long hair wildly. Her clothing was torn by the low branches. Her small white feet were bruised and mud-stained by the stony, cruel pathway to the summit of the cliff. The shouts of her lover were lost in the wind as he moved swiftly after her. Near the top, she stumbled over a large rock, crying hysterically. She limped and crawled to the edge of the precipice. Her lover reached her, clutched at her, spinning her around to face him. Her eyes were wide with terror as the lover held her tightly, his lips pressed against her throat. Soon she grew limp, and he released her. Suddenly, with a, a last surge of energy, she broke free and hurled herself off the cliff. Her scream, reacting and echoing as she plunged downward. Her body was impaled in the large, craggy rocks below. See? It's just as you left it, as we left it, long, long ago. Nothing has changed, even we haven't changed. Or perhaps you've changed. You're more lovely, my dear Josette, than I remembered. Josette? Yes. From now on, that will be your name. A name of great beauty, and you must take it proudly. It's bestowed on you as the best honor I can pay to a mortal woman. Josette. Yes, 
In time, you will begin to think like her, act like her. You will become her. I will become her. That's right. The two of us, we shall experience all the joy that was denied for so many, many years to me and to my lovely Josette. Joy? Yes, joy. Happiness. At last. At last. I've forgiven you. Well, not you, but Josette. She should never have dashed herself on the rocks beneath the cliff. She should never have robbed me of herself. I wanted to give her life, not death. Just as it is life, I will give to you. Life. So you mustn't be afraid. Not life as most men know it, but it is life. And we will live, we will live together, the two of us. Two of us together? Yes. Nothing will separate us ever again. I couldn't let her go on. Why not? Well, if Elizabeth was right, if that was Josette, she was recreating her death. But she was about to tell us the name of the person who was chasing her. I couldn't let her go through that death again. Vicky, Vicky, are you all right? You shouldn't have stopped her. It was the only way I could save her. Josette was here, again. Josette? I think it's an incident best forgotten. Do you mean she spoke through me, like last time? It seems that she was reliving the experience just before her death. The last time there was something very specific Josette wanted to tell us. I wonder if there's something she was trying to tell us this time, too. Obviously not. She was merely experiencing a pain that, that troubled her. Do you mean that I was... I was reliving the, the night when she threw herself off the cliffs. Somebody was chasing you. That's why you jumped. Somebody chasing me? Who? You never said. Well, but perhaps yes. that's what Josette was trying to tell us, the name of the person who was chasing her. No one ever found out. But we were about to. Well, it makes no difference. Whoever it was is now long gone, dead these many years. And I hardly think it humane that we should put Miss Winters or the spirit of Josette through so much torment. You must be Miss Hoffman. Yes, how do you do? That will be all, Willie. Thank you. Oh, I promised him I'd take full blame for being here. Visitors apparently make him very anxious. You must forgive Willie. He's a, a very strange man, but I found him to be a loyal and valuable servant. You know, of course, why I'm here. According to Miss Winters, you're doing research on my family and would like access to my library. Yes, and to any personal knowledge that you might have, if you don't mind. Well, it, it isn't a matter of minding, Miss Hartman. And I certainly feel that your project is extremely interesting. Oh, then I can count on your cooperation. I'm afraid not. Oh? If you think it's interesting. But my opinion in this case does not affect my decision. And my decision is no. May I ask why? If you like. But I don't feel particularly obliged to give you an answer. I see. But I... I do thank you for your interest in my family. Now, you, of course, are from England. Oh, I see you've been told my history. Oh, very slightly. But I would like to Please, know... Please, Miss Hoffman, 
I'd prefer not encouraging you any further by answering even your slightest question. I don't mean to sound abrupt, but it would be senseless for me to start something that I have no intention of continuing. I understand, but perhaps you'll change your mind. I assure you I will not. But a man with your interest in the past, sure. Prefers to keep his interest to himself. You didn't let me finish. I have done some research of my own. I might know something about your family that you might find extremely informative. I doubt it. How can you be so sure? Well, I can't, but... I can be disinterested. About your family history? Oh, no one who lives in this house could be disinterested. Well, perhaps then my disinterest is limited to what you might contribute. Are you sure it would be so negligible? Not necessarily. But the price I would have to pay is too high. Evening, Mr. Collins. Miss Hoffman. Well, I didn't expect to see you so soon again. I wonder if I might speak to you for a moment. Well, I don't want to sound rude, but I can't imagine what we have to discuss. Well, I'm, I'm not here to get information from you. I want to show you something. Well, what is it? Well, it's a family album with some portraits of your ancestors I thought you might be interested in seeing. Why? Well, I actually had hoped that you would tell me something about them, something I didn't already know. You're very persistent, Miss Hoffman. I have nothing to tell you. Then I've made the trip in vain. But since I have made the trip, why don't you let them, me show you them to you anyway? Come in. But I can only give you a few minutes of my time. That'll be fine. I assume that's the book you're talking about. Yes. Now, here is a portrait of the of the original Barnabas Collins, your namesake. So I see. I must say the the resemblance is remarkable. It's often commented on. And and this is his mother, Naomi. Isn't she lovely? Yes. And uh, on the next page, you'll find a portrait of, of Joshua, the, the father of Barnabas. I recognize him from other portraits. And on the next page uh, is Sarah Collins, the sister of Barnabas. Uh oh She's on the next page. Why, why don't you turn the page? She's it's a lovely child, isn't she? Yes. Look at her eyes. They're, they're very much like yours. Do you think so? And her features. You, you really do look very much alike. What are you doing? Even historians have a certain amount of feminine vanity. I was just checking my makeup. Well, I've looked at your portraits, Miss Hoffman. Is that what you wanted? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry that you, you weren't very interested. Well, I'm afraid your assumption is correct. Then, th th then I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Collins, and good evening. Good evening, Miss Hoffman.
Good evening, Barnabas Collins. I've been waiting for you for a long time. A long, long time. Have you? Yes. Why? Because I know what you are. What do you mean, you know what I am? You are Barnabas Collins, the only Barnabas Collins, who died over 130 years ago. That's an absurd statement. Don't try to deny it. I've investigated you thoroughly, and I've seen you in your coffin. Have you? Yesterday, at dawn. You realize that such knowledge puts you in great danger? Well, of course, that's why I took the precaution of putting a dummy in the bed. But you didn't take the precaution of getting as far away from here as possible. No, because what I need is here. What is it you want? You. I don't know what you mean, but it doesn't matter. Because I am going to kill you. Miss Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman? I... Dr. Hoffman? Yes. Yes, I, I, I can help you. Help me? Yes, I, I tell you. You don't have to live this life. Uh, you're merely trying to save yourself. Oh. Would I, would I let myself be in this position if I didn't believe I had something of value for you and for me? But there is no other way of life for me. There is. It isn't possible. It wasn't possible 130 odd years ago, but it is possible now. How can you be so certain? Oh, because I've spent my lifetime studying conditions such as yours. How could you have done this? Have there been others like myself? No. You're the only one I've encountered. That's why you're so important to me. That's why I need you. Need me? From the time I entered medical school, I've been fascinated by the relationship of life to death. I believe that one is a continuance of the other, and that someday they will merge, and that life will not terminate. That day is close at hand now, now that I've found you. You assume too much. You assume that I'm interested in your theory. Oh, you can't help but be interested in my theory. You're the, you're the only link I know of that can span the two worlds from dead to living. Oh, my research has been very long and fruitless up till now. Your conditions seem to exist only in legend and story. I had no hope of finding someone like you. What is this? theory of yours? Whole blood is insufficient to sustain you. That's why you constantly have to replenish your supply. If I were to permit you, what would you do? Well, the basis of your problem is the destructive nature of your blood cells. There's an imbalance which causes more cells to be destroyed than replaced. My objective then is to alter the cellular structure of your blood by introducing a new plasma into your arterial system. You begin to intrigue me, Dr. Hoffman. You begin to intrigue me very much. Thank you. 